to this topic is delivered through the platform form of pharmacology notes and the topic is delivered by registered pharmacist Humaira Shaheen the gold medalist today's topic is selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists or we can say we are studying about selective beta blockers as we have studied that the adrenergic receptors antagonists are of two types these types are it could be non selective beta blocker or can be selective beta blocker the non selective beta blockers are those type of beta blockers which have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors I mean these are the drugs which have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors while there are some drugs which are selective which has affinity only for beta 1 receptors so those which are have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors these are termed as non selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists and we have studied about these drugs in the last lecture that non selective beta blockers these are really effective drugs these are those drugs which are used in the case of hypertension these are used in the case of congestive heart failure these are used in coronary artery diseases so these are very effective drugs in the case of hypertension congestive heart failure and coronary artery diseases but as they are non selective so by acting on the bronchial smooth muscles they inhibit the smooth muscles is these non selective blockers they act on bronchial smooth muscle bronchial smooth muscles and inhibit that smooth muscles and by inhibiting the smooth muscles it will produce vaso constriction and this will leads to bronco constriction and this bronco constriction is something not the desirable effect we are using the drug for hypertension and it is causing bronco constriction so in the case of the patients with asthma or or copd then what will be the effect in the case of that coronary obstructive pulmonary diseases and in the case of asthma this bronco construction is not a desirable effect so to eliminate the side effects to eliminate this bronco construction a new class of the drugs were used that is selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonist or selective beta blockers these are the drugs which are also used in hypertension but they does not cause bronco constriction and we usually refer these drugs to those patients which are suffering with copd or asthma now what are the drugs which are included in this class the drugs which are selective beta receptor blockers that is selective beta 1 receptor blockers which have affinity only for beta 1 these drugs include adenolol azivitolol metoprolol bisoprolol nabivolol and asmolol these are the drugs which blocks only beta 1 receptors now among these drugs these drugs are termed as cardio selective cardio selective now these drugs are termed as cardio selective drugs atinolol azivitolol metoprolol bisoprolol these all drugs are effective in the case of cardiac actions when given in the low doses but they lose their action when given at a high doses they usually require dose 50 to 100 folds less than non selective blockers example do that propranolol 
This propranolol, it is a non-selective beta blocker. It also used in a congestive heart failure or coronary artery diseases. But if we use adenolol, azubutalol or metoprolol, then the dose of these drugs will be 50 to 100 fold less than the propranolol. So at low doses, we can have the same effect. Now, these drugs are cardioselective. Obviously, at the low doses, not the high doses. So how they act? What they do? We have catecholamines or neurotransmitters, NM body, epinephrine, norepinephrine. So what is epinephrine and norepinephrine do with the heart? If you see a heart, then on a heart, there are SA node, right? Yes, there is SA node, there is AV node, there is Pukendi fibers and myocardium. Now, on myo SA node, on AV node, on myocardium, which receptor is present? Yes, the receptor present is beta 1. Beta 1 receptor is present on SA node, beta 1 receptor is present on AV node, and beta 1 receptor is present on myocardium. So, when epinephrine comes, and epinephrine acts on this receptor, when epinephrine comes and binds to this receptor here with beta 1 and stimulates this you know, losses motoric. So by binding with the SA node, it will cause a decrease, it will cause increase in heart rate. When blockers bind, it will decrease heart rate. When epinephrine bind, it will increase heart rate. Epinephrine, the normal catecholamines, when bind with these receptors, it causes increased heart rate. It causes increases in the heart rate. So, what is this term called when heart rate is increased? That is positive chronotropic action. And when epinephrine act on this myocardium, it will increase stroke volume. And increase stroke volume, it is termed as positive anotropic action. Yes, when SA node is stimulated, heart rate is increased, and when heart rate is increased, it is termed as positive chronotropic action. And when when uh, it acts on a uh, myocardium, then it increases stroke volume, and increasing the stroke volume is termed as positive inotropic action. And this heart rate and stroke volume is termed as cardiac, and ultimately the cardiac output is increased. This is the normal physiology. Now, what the blockers do? Blockers will do totally opposite of that. We will do this with a black. Now beta 1 blockers. Adenolol, azimutolol, or metoprolol. It's come to the receptors, it binds with the receptors. On SA node, it decreases heart rate. On myocardium, it decreases short volume, thus it produces negative chronotropic action and negative inotropic action. So if we say that whenever these drugs bind on, a, uh, on these receptors or uh, bind to the uh, beta 1 selective receptors, then it decreases heart rate, decreases stroke volume. This decrease in the heart rate is termed as negative chronotropic and this is termed as negative inotropic and thus they decrease cardiac output. Got it? Okay. On a heart, it causes decrease in the cardiac output. They does not have as uh, such effect on the peripheral resistance. They just have a little effect on peripheral resistance. What, what is the effect on glucose metabolism? Glucose metabolism. If you remember that propanolol when act on the glucose metabolism, we find the beta 2 receptors. And but we have selective beta blockers being which act on a beta 1 receptor. So in the case of glucose metabolism, these beta 2 receptors will not be affected and glucose metabolism will not be altered. It is not altered. It remains as such. Now if the patient else with uh, diabetes mellitus and if we give a propranolol and it will compromise its glucose metabolism, so that will not be useful for the patient which is ha who is suffering with diabetes mellitus. So in this, those cases where the patient is suffering with glucose metabolism, uh, 
sorry, when the patient is suffering with diabetes mellitus, then glucose metabolism should not be altered. In that case, we can use atinolol, azimutolol, or metoprolol. Yes. So the peripheral resistance is not as much altered. Glucose metabolism is not altered as such. Cardiac output is decreased. And what about the plasma HDL level? It does not alter even the plasma HDL level. It will not affect the plasma HDL level. Now, what are the therapeutic uses of these drugs? Where we use these drugs? The therapeutic uses. I have discussed in the whole lecture. I can uh, think you can tell me easily that what are the therapeutic uses. Yes, it can be used in the case of hypertension, but in those patients which are suffering with asthma, it can be used in hypertension, but those which are suffering with COPD, it can be used in a patient with hypertension and diabetes. Yes, these are the therapeutic uses of these drugs. So what we have discussed, beta-1 selective receptor blockers in which the drugs are adenolol, azimutolol, metoprolol, bisoprolol, nabibolol, and asmolol. Okay, among these drugs, the asmolol is a type of a drug which cannot be given orally. These are having ester linkage. The warning is of ester linkage. And due to this ester linkage, if it's given orally, then in the liver, they are damaged. So, asmolol is always given IV because these are damaged by stomach and first class factors high. So, adenolol, azibutolol, and metoprolol, these all drugs are used in the case of hypertension, asthma, and COPD cases where the propanolol cannot be used. Hope this is clear till here. You can ask the questions in the comments. Thank you.